pretty pumped about this week's podcast. In the house, TJ Hendy, Trevor Jack out there, for those that don't know, all-round waterman and somebody we love having around the office at Body Science. How are you, mate? Very good, mate. I'm very pleased to be on the call. Cool. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. (laughs) Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And on the end of that, I'm going to throw... Waterman. TJ, how are you, brother? Very well. A couple of weeks of laziness for me, so I'm just starting to regather some energy after pulling out of the Nutrigrain series this year, so I'm um, regathering some momentum at the moment. Well, mate, fill us in. What happened there? Let's get straight into it. I just caught COVID at the wrong time, really, and tried to push myself too quickly post-COVID. The body just didn't deal with it very well and a bit of inflammation of the heart, so um, that was that was good fun, just having to deal with that and try to race and stuff, and I thought I was just having uh, like a bit of an episode of not not enjoying myself and stuff like that but I, I once I seen the doctor and stuff and um, we decided to pull out. A, I worked out what was going on, and then it really hit me. I was about three weeks in bed, really, after that. And mate, was it life threatening, or what? What was it? Because I got told that you nearly died. Like there were so many stories going around at the time as to what happened, and <laughs> obviously, inflammation of the heart during competition is a place you don't want to be. Yeah, no, nah, it. I don't think I was at the life threatening point, but maybe if I race the next two days after that, you know, like I think I've, I like to think I'm a pretty mentally strong person, and like I'm pretty resilient and stuff. So I think I pushed myself to like a pretty low point physically. Yeah, so it's been funny dealing with it since, but I don't think I was ready to die just yet at that point. (laughs) Yeah, nice. So, mate, let's talk about Iron Man. Who influenced you in your life in relation to Iron Man? (laughs) Well, it's funny. It's it's clearly clearly my dad had a massive um, part to do with it. So for those that I don't sort of know it, I, I your saw, dad's Trevor Hendy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that at the time when I was coming into the sport, dad was by far the greatest of all time, yeah. uh, the goat, or whatever you want to say. So we had Shannon Eckstein coming along, trying to push all his records at that point, and then he did just after I came along, sort of thing. So it was for me. I sort of fell into it a little bit. I just a few things went the right way. I didn't want to be an Ironman growing up or I didn't think I wanted to be you know dad was actually taking a fair bit of a we'll say a rest from surf lifesaving and an Ironman and that part of his life and went and sort of did some other stuff and uh, created more business for himself outside of just being the Ironman Trevor Hendy so I didn't really see a lot of it did about two weeks of nippers growing up and hated it just loved being in the ocean just with my dad or just with my mates I didn't want to go and have people tell me what to do and I actually pretty talented in the ocean just purely because dad took me out from when I was three years old and you know it sort of rubs off on you pretty quickly the way to move around in the ocean and have fun in the ocean so I was about 16 when I decided I wanted to be an Ironman and it just a few things fell into place where I was just about to finish school didn't know what I wanted to be how I wanted to make money all that sort of stuff uh, it worked out that I was actually going back to the surf club to do um, a bit of helping out of the bronze medallion group and teach them how to upskill their swimming get them a little bit more comfortable in bigger surf and stuff and he asked me to come along pay me a little bit of money and support him doing that and help out out his water safety and all that sort of stuff so I went along and it just it sort of fell into place that I was right beside the training group under Zane Hamill who's still the coach now who looked after me the whole way through and he invited me to go do some a session with them and they were doing some body surfing and some swim starts and stuff like that and not to be cocky or anything I just went in had a really good session and it felt nice to beat some people yeah nice. (laughs) so uh, from there from there it was sort of after that everything just sort of took care of itself I had to make a decision and do something as a job I sort of started to realize that um, Iron Man got a few girls and stuff at that point and that was something I wanted to do with my life at that point so um Stop it. And I thought there was I thought there was a lot of money in it, you know, like just looking from the outside, looking in, they were alive on te- telly and all that sort of stuff and pretty well known on the Gold Coast. And, you know, I looked at Shannon and Kai Hurst and Phil Clayton and all those guys that were still racing at that point and they all seemed like they had a pretty mellow life and like uh, Clayto, for example, was still going over snapping surfboards at Stratty during the week. So that was like, oh, looks pretty good to me. And yeah. I just fell into it from there and started as a board paddler and then uh, from there moved into having a red hot crack at Iron Man. I probably really made the decision to have a good good crack at it when I was about 18, almost 19. And how old are you now? I'm 26. Mate, it's been a few years playing in that role of Iron Man. And can we touch on the point, like how hard was it for the father-son thing happens a bit in sport these days. You see 
did a fair bit. But like you said, your dad was a goat. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't he wasn't an NRL player and and one of the sons has come through. He was like, for example, in the Immortals. At, if you're talking football, your dad was in the Immortals when it comes to I mean, how hard was it for you in that space to get your head right as an athlete when I, I can only assume that you constantly were compared to your father for quite a few years until you built yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's why um for well, like when I when I broke out and won my Nutrigrain race at the very start, like second series in the profe- uh, second season in the professional series broke out won the first race of the year and stuff and it was a really game changing moment for me because I sort of got to hide for a while yeah. you know like just be hit Trev's son it wasn't TJ Hendy at, at all so there was a little bit of a game changer there and um, trying to understand myself a little bit better I broke out of that shadow to then be all over the news it was the first time Iron Man had been on newspapers and on, on the telly Australia wide for 15 years at that point wow. so I, I no got pressure. <laughs> flown around and, yeah got flown around to some interviews and um i actually got myself sick in that t- two weeks before the next race of the series and um all this all this crazy stuff happened and um i went from you know being first in the series after the first race to seventh in the series by the end just by having a bit of chaos in- yep. and then it's definitely an interesting one having the sun figure coming through me to have a really red hot crack at the sport that your dad did it's like there's expectations but it's it's mostly from yourself, you know, and you, there is things like had people say, you're not going to do what your dad did. You're not going to do this, you know, like to my face. I'm like, whoa, yeah, you know. Wow, so it's just like interesting ones. Like yeah, young people my age are like, you're not going to be the greatest of all time like your dad just to get in my like, head, you know. Like when before I even wanted to be an Iron Man, when I was just doing some board paddling, they're like, what's the point? You know, and I'm like, whoa. So I couldn't swim in the pool at that point and swim over 100 meters. So I'm pretty proud of myself that I got this far at least. Yeah, different different one. I, I got a lot of good stuff out of being Trev's son. I think I got a few sponsors a bit easier. I got paid a little bit better. Like, so it's it's probably evened itself out. The pressure is something I definitely felt. Yeah, and I guess there's there's no one coming going going to train you for that. You just, as a young man, had to take that on. Yeah. Yeah, it was just something that you learn every day and it's sort of, yeah, get more comfortable in those shoes and wear them in a little bit more. So how did you go from being, you know, the board paddler who couldn't swim is the way you put it, to winning one of the Ironman races and next thing flown all around to do media all around the place? Like, was anyone holding your hand leading in and helping you through that process or did you just take your really casual beach approach in and go, I'm just going to do whatever I do? Well, a lot of credit to my coach Zane Hamill. Yeah. Um, Dennis Cottrell at the very start was a big, big mentor of mine in yeah. the swimming pool. Game changer for me, and also my chiropractor Keith Maitland, who did a bit of life coaching for me, sort of just let me let go of some of the baggage I was holding on to. And then obviously my dad helping me through different um, stuff, and then family sponsors, supporters, all that sort of stuff. But it just, it just really for me was like you want to prove yourself, you know? Like you, the more someone tells you you, you can't do something, especially at that age you don't know that you make decisions based on your ego feeling like it's been like you know you, that you, if you're told something you feel like oh i'm not good enough then you go prove that you're good enough so it's that was pretty much how it all you know turned into a, what it did but it just i think it was a lot of insecurity coming out that i wasn't a good iron man or i wasn't going to be able to make it and all that sort of stuff so i opposite was get up go swim train and try really hard you know get get good at swimming i i, I was i had a, a bit of natural talent in the pool i i um i'd win the 50 meter freestyle at the swimming carnivals each year but then i if i did the 100 meter freestyle i'd come dead last because i was just like i had no understanding of how to swim that race yeah. because it was a bit further but dennis helped me through that and my my coach zane hamill on the board and skiing and the iron man we got you know he's he helped out shannon Eckstein through his career and taught me me a lot as well and then I had good guys around me like uh, Zach Orchard who was a couple of years older than me and was a really good junior prospect yeah. and just had had a lot for place but I, I have to give myself a little bit of credit I just got it done just had a real red hot crack at it and got fit and um, I think my knowledge for the ocean got me there a little bit quicker than people probably expected nice and mate from that and I'll let go of the dad thing in a minute because you know this is a, a podcast about yourself but he is like you said the goat so I'm going to grab it if I can yeah do, when you compete now does you know does dad ring up and go oh let's do this let's do this talk about this like is is he back on the sand with you in any way apart from supportive as a father would be is he is he giving you that little secret bit of advice is he is he getting involved in the the structure of your race versus just being a supportive dad yeah i've got no structure race day anymore i just like but but dad is a massive massive part 
part of my like my race day yeah. though. He's my he's my handler, so he nice. he does take care of that stuff. And usually I'll pick him up on the morning and go to the chiropractor before I start racing, and and then come back. And he sort of just looks after everything. I don't carry anything or do anything. He walks through everyone and makes sure everything's happening for me, gets everything right. So he looks after that. But then he does give me a fair bit of control of my own strategies and yep. and stuff like that. And he he knows you know that I have a great understanding of the ocean. I can see the way the way the water's moving, where the rip is, where the sand sandbank is, and all that sort of stuff. In terms of you know, I've had really good races when I've had no strategy, and and when I've put strategy on it, as soon as I fall apart, that strategy doesn't work because of a wave or something going wrong. Yep. It's just like it falls apart pretty quick. So you need an A B C D E F G plan or just go with the flow and now i just went to oh it's probably better for me just to go with the flow and that's the way i do it in my life anyway so it's the type of guy i am <laughs> yeah no i thought man i love you coming in the office like you bring the the happiness of, i feel like i'm at the beach when you're with us and it was interesting how you became part of the body science family as you came in and started do, throwing down with um andy Jin and the boys in those friday sessions like you, and, sense, and it yeah. was stuff you'd never done before and you just loved it didn't you like you you didn't love it at the time because like, i've got good pictures of your face but you know the concept of what you were doing you just really enjoyed that not training in that space you normally train in yeah for sure i think uh variety is massive like it's now 10 years of me being an iron man and uh, that was huge because i just come back from injury i was about eight ten kilos heavier than i should be and it was massive just to train around different people do different stuff and um you know i definitely walked away sore a few times that's for sure no i just i just love being around different people getting to know different energies and being in in amongst a different group is always good i think i learned something new and you know i love sort of just putting my energy out there into the world and seeing what happens hey tatiana it's greg here how are you good how are you i've got a question for you what's gluten-free tested got no fillers gums organic palm free oil eco-friendly dairy free no soy gmo free peanut free 100 vegan no added sugar egg free low carb trans fat high protein only has how many calories 17 calories 17 it's calories it's got nine superfoods in it and tastes like coffee what's it called it's our new clean coffee brain fuel wow that was a big mouthful there's some cool stuff in it what do we got in it we got four different types of adaptogenic mushrooms nice what else we got ashwagandha yeah we got ginseng we got um coconut mct oil so no palm oil coconut um based what else i lose count peruvian cacao and robusta coffee which is the strongest coffee we can find so if you're looking for a robusta coffee blend 150 megs of caffeine made with certified organic ingredients a good nootropic we call it brain fuel clean coffee brain fuel get it in store I want to rip into your family life and some of your theories around mental health and you're very spiritual as a human. But before we do that, can we talk about all those young aspiring clubbies out there that think, geez, I'm going to be an Ironman one day. Are you, are you supportive of more kids having a crack at the high end or do you think the sport needs to change for that to be something that works? Or where, where are we at? Mate, I'm tw I'm 26 now and I've had an amazing career and I've had, you know, I've, I've got to learn a lot about myself and I've understood how to be, you know, a lit at something you know so for me that lesson there and understanding more about yourself and how to be elite and how to actually carry that into the rest of your life and how to you know get up early and actually go through the hard stuff that you don't necessarily want to do to achieve the things that you do want to achieve i think that's why sport is still going to be amazing whether you're making money or not making money because there's not many areas that you can actually learn how to you know do that sort of stuff and carry it through into business or life so i i'm really comfortable with you know, not having a huge amount of money in my bank account right now, but I've got a lot of knowledge from sort of how life works. And if you actually put your, put your head down and really work hard, that things just usually just sort of work out. I think once you really get your heart involved with it and have a red hot crack, yeah, it works itself out. And I think I'm 26. And uh, if I worked hard on something else for another 10 years and it wasn't Iron Man, it'd be amazing to see what that was too. Yeah, nice. So in that way, yes, 100%, I think. Iron Man's still good enough for people to go in. They're still going to learn what they need to learn. They might not get all the trips paid for and all these things and have a million dollars in their bank account, but they'll have a lot of understanding in here and here and, you know, and that's the main thing. Yeah, nice. And do you think, you know, it, it's been dominated by um, or Nutrigrain recent in that space and Shore and Partners have come in and created some really exciting um, competitions uh, around the area. Do you think a lot more brands will come in and do that type of thing in surf? Because it's got incredible um, 
numbers when you look at the people who actually play in who play the sport yeah well we always hope for, for that because i really believe that it is what sets a standard for our our safety in the ocean really you know like mm. we've got our surf clubs and we are all at the top of our surf clubs in terms of rescuing people on a paddleboard we've got guys that are better at rescuing on irbs we've got other guys that are better at doing resus on the beach all that sort of stuff but when it ter- comes to fitness of actually getting out in the surf and saving someone's life where australia we've, we've got we're an island you yeah. know we've got water the whole way around us it's pretty important to have members in the surf clubs that know what they're doing so i um i really think that if people can see that side of things and really get on and and understand that it's its role in the community and and uh, maybe the councils and things like that could get that little bit more involved and see that part of the tourism part of it and all yeah. that sort of stuff that we're doing but then also guys like shore and partners nutrigrain yeah hopefully a few other sponsors come in and and can keep that dream alive for those young kids that want to make some money out of it and have stand atop of the podium a few times yeah and mate do you love the idea like the the nrl is one competition all things is do you, do you like the idea of the example of the nutrigrain series becoming bigger and more money and and becoming more you know annual versus having a period or do you like the idea of a whole lot of pop-up events that are all slightly different different formats like the shore and partners have done some really cool stuff in that space you got your nutrigrain do you like the idea of having a lot of variety or do you think it should be let's put all the money into one and make it big yeah well when Nutrigrain was at its best in my opinion it was six rounds they were all separate one race on a weekend you know maybe three weeks apart Noosa Portsy Gold Coast you know wherever sometimes in WA and having a, a lot of travel a lot of time between races to really you know iron out anything that you needed to change in that time so that's where it needs to be for me I think it needs to be anywhere between five and eight races maybe include the cool and gutter gold every second year um and bring that in and make it really exciting in that point for not for just the spectators but for the athletes to really have the experience yep. unfortunately because of covid it got squeezed into the two weekends and for me that i could not put myself through another 30 weeks of training for, for that you know because i got sick and ha- i missed most of it and yep. i didn't even get to put myself all that training that i did up like i didn't actually get to show how much work i'd done because i got sick at the wrong time so it was so close to Together, whereas usually if you got sick you might have one or two bad races and you'd be able to come good by the end yeah so i definitely think the nutri needs to expand have that longer presence maybe from october to february sort of thing and then shore and partners they're throwing so much money at it it's amazing you yeah. know like the, the three races is enough you know that if they want to do four or five amazing would love that yeah. but you know i can't ask much for much more than a short course race that goes from 12 to 15 minutes long is inclusive of everybody uh is very exciting because there's a lot of sprint finishes in short racing and there's money on the line yeah. you know so we've got a great variety at the moment if Nutrigrain can um spread it out a little bit further and you know they they do say it's iron man food so you know we're, we're going to keep that brand synergy there um and actually you know keep the iron man series alive to maybe keep Nutrigrain alive vice versa i'm not sure yeah i I really think that there's room to improve on the professional series and I think maybe Shore and Partners this year stepped up a little bit and might have actually taken over the more professional side of things. Well, that's interesting to hear. That's really interesting. And and you are you are correct. When you think of Nutrigrain, you think of Ironman, don't you? And Iron Women, like Iron Athletes, it's it's amazing. It's probably one of the best relationships in sport in Australia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, it's the way that what we do is so far out of your comfort zone at all times that anything comfortable, relationships with people, relationships with others, it, you sort of, it, I find because we're in that that area, you sort of get to know a lot of about people pretty quickly and you understand them a bit better. Yeah. So, mate, yeah. we're, we're going to jump into your life in a second. For, for the people out there that are in the fitness sporting industry that don't know, can you talk us through a week, a week of training? Yep, for sure. Um, so, at, at my peak through the winter training 15 16 times a week um wow. up at up at 4 30 in it in the pool by 5 15 5 to 7 kilometers monday tuesday thursday friday in the pool wednesday um a little sleep in get up at f- about 5 15 505 5 15 sort of thing go do an ironman session on wednesday and saturdays yep. and that they go for an hour on wednesday and two two to three hours on a on a saturday and then 
Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, I usually have run and gym. Uh, I usually have run Monday, gym Tuesday, run Thursday, gym Friday, yep. and then paddle the board Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, paddle the uh, – no, sorry, Monday afternoon, paddle the ski, Tuesday afternoon, paddle board, Wednesday, paddle the ski, Thursday, paddle the board, Friday, paddle the ski. So changing it up always and making sure you have put all the emphasis on every discipline of our sport. So And then chiropractor, physio, d- diet. Coming in to see you guys for all the stuff I need in there, and seeing Tatiana on my diet needs. It, it becomes a full full job pretty quickly. That is you know, like that's amazing. I don't yeah, think people so, really understand um, the level of of. <laughs> Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, it's not something you can be, you can be a gifted athlete at times and still play elite sport. Like I look at basketball, for example, basketballers play so much basketball, they don't train, you know, yeah. like they're playing three times a week. And then, or, and I mean, obviously that is a version of training, but you've just laid down a platform of, I don't know, I'm halfway through it, I had a little vomit in my mouth and then I fell asleep and I yeah. woke up and you're still going. It was, yeah. it's just crazy the amount of effort that you guys put into and girls put into to be these athletes. Pretty funny because I, people don't realize I get up at 4.30 and I don't get home till 11. I cook myself a feed at home and then usually sleep from 12 to 1.30 and then get, get up, have another feed and go training 4 to 5, come home, have a feed and go back to sleep and that's 20 weeks of the year. When you say it like <laughs> Eating and sleeping, it sounds all right. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Edit that bit out, hey? What do you reckon? No, I'm going to joke. Yeah. Mate, so obviously there's not, like you said, you, you, you've obviously trained yourself to have those power naps during the day. What is it that you do mentally or spiritually to yourself to bring yourself out of that zone and be that dad that you just love? Like on your Insta should be dad of the year account. Like you, you just love being a dad. No, I think um, I, I definitely, you know, I'm obviously a new dad as well. And um, the best. like I, yeah, I just I just think that that's the important stuff, you know. Like for me, I, it gives me much more than a, a win or anything could ever give me or, or money or, you know, a mansion on the beach or anything like that. Going and having a cuddle and, and having a smile and she's laughing now and all that sort of stuff, you know. Those things are just like amazing. They're the stuff that you just can't grab, you know. There's, there's the rest of those things that those finite things that you can grab and you can touch and you can, you know, obviously I can, I can touch and feel the baby but like those those moments of emotion and and actual feelings and stuff like that that they're the stuff that i i personally look forward to in my life whether it's her or just different things with friends and family and stuff like that i, I think they're the most important things and the ones that you hold on to forever so i guess that comes pretty naturally now being able to have those moments come back and see what's important in my life and then i'm not big on meditation or anything but i just love like listening to like random sort of yoga music while having a sauna or a ice bath and sort of zoning out and trying to think about different things or, you know, massive on Joe Rogan and different uh, sitting on the fence with all, all different aspects of life and challenging yourself in different ways mentally and physically and emotionally and, and never being stuck on one side of things and always, you know, being a, a, um, a sort of ready for your, your point of view to change. Nice. And, mate, from a, from a perspective of being a dad, would you – encourage your children to get into become iron iron man athletes or would you be looking on at a different path are you a tennis dad a golf dad or what are you i'll do whatever they're drawn to really i think my dad you know led, led the way for me in the, that he'd never pushed me to do anything i wanted to be a pro surfer and it fe- i fell into iron man and i think that will happen the same with my kids who will whatever ha- really want to do it will just come to the come to the surface and you know it will just sort of they'll it'll fall into place as long as i sort of give them the space to learn who they are and what they want to do yeah nice ne- never better said major any final words you've got for anyone out there that's going to change a life anything that you any motto that you believe has changed your life that turning door moment i think since i've become a dad the main thing that i've learned is that the world doesn't owe you anything and that you don't have to you know like it's it's not against you that the world's not against you and as, since I've probably seen that and realized that everything's actually for you and to support your greater story um, or the next chapter of your life even if it's a, feels like it's a bit of a um, a moment in your life where you're going through that it, it feels like punishment or like it's really really tough I really believe that everything happens for a reason and the world's definitely not against you mate you're one of the good people on my life in this world I've really enjoyed you you've only been in the family for like oh, two years full send for Probably 12 months ago, I reckon. 12 months ago. And I've yeah. really enjoyed yeah. every minute of you coming in to disrupt office life. It's been awesome. And um, 
I can't wish you <laughs> Thanks, any more mate. than happiness and success in the future. So Thanks, mate. It's very reciprocated. I come in and enjoy my time with you and I think it's a mirror reflecting always and, and learning from each other and, you know, I'm really grateful to be a part of your journey as well. Yeah, sensational. TJ, you, you've, to be an elite athlete, you've, you've got to have a sense of selfishness. You're, you're a father. You, you've, you've got a loving family. You, you give a lot to the club. You do a lot with the younger kids. I see it all the time. What's the cost of that winning and excellence? Like you're a 26-year-old elite athlete. You grew up in the shoes of somebody who was a goat. Like what has been the cost of this winning and this excellence that you've had to drive yourself through? Mate, it's a, it's a crazy question because there's a, there's a lot of sacrifice in becoming the person that you want to become no matter what, you know, no matter what you do, whether it's uh, business, making a million dollars or winning an Ironman race, all that sort of stuff, being the best person you can be, there's a there's a selfishness to it. It's very, you know, like right in your face with Ironman because it's two to three sessions a day, you're tired, you're up early, you come home, sometimes you're grumpy, you didn't do the times that you wanted to do, but you miss a lot of travel of like those snowboarding trips, yeah. the, you know, the surfing trip, you know, we get about six weeks off on off of the year. A lot of the time you've got to be super switched on with your diet you got to say no to certain birthday parties or things at the wrong like that are at the wrong times because you don't want to get your arm twisted you know those yeah. things that you know for me after t- after 10 years of doing it there's a lot of those things and you go when when's enough enough where, where you go all right i've got what i want out of iron man racing when when do you start saying yeah i'll go to justin lane and have that pizza and a couple of beers or when do you say yeah it's t- i'm going to go over to fiji and you know or go down that mountain when it's super snowy and you might get injured or yeah. go play a, a bit of football the cost of on your family your partners and all that sort of stuff they're along with the, they're on the ride with you you know so they're, they're a big part of it and you forget that sometimes and i've just recently tried to make the transition from finite to infinite so i think you can be a bit more selfish if you're infinite and trying to become a better person and it's still selfish in a way but it's it's more community and family like uh orientated yeah. so um i think in the past the cost has been I've been so finite that it's been so selfish and sometimes can impact your own relationships with your family your, all that stuff and 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 your friends and you know there's guys that I, I would call some of my best friends and I haven't seen them in 10 years so there's definitely cost there's yeah. definitely you know there's definitely sacrifices and you know I can't wait for you know whenever it comes that I'm going to hang up the togs and I'll go catch up with those boys and say boys I had a pretty crazy 10 years <laughs> and you know uh, like th- those things are interesting you know I don't think I'm quite ready just yet yeah no Nice. So, mate, you've been on you've been on a Nutrigrain box in every supermarket. Kids have all seen you, and I'm not one to miss an opportunity for a selfish plug. What are your favourite body science? Like, if a guy can be on the front of a Nutrigrain box, what? Tell us what your favourite body science products are, <laughs> mate. I love the shred. insert selfish plug love- right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shred. I just come from being overweight and and didn't look after myself while I was injured. Was down pretty low. My identity of Iron Man had been changed completely. And shred got me back on. You know, got me back on a roll. And you know, I love all the protein bars. I love everything you guys do. You know, the clean bars and all, all that sort of stuff. I I'm doing the protein with some porridge at the moment and yeah, and works. stuff. And I I didn't have oats for breakfast for a long time. And now I'm just really loving that with my um my vegan protein and stuff. So yeah. I. I think there's so much good stuff, mate. The shred's the first one that came to mind. Good. So um, that's an official ending to the selfless plug, and I appreciate you for that. Thanks for coming <laughs> on, mate. <laughs> I love it. I'll see you out in the surf one day soon because that's the only place I really see you these days apart from the office. Yeah, mate. I'm gonna, I'll come in and see you in there. Awesome. <laughs> Get better. Thanks, mate.